Hi, Kofina Eagles Dog here, and today I am making some drop spindles for a largesse project, and also so I can learn how to use one. Um, we started off with this isn't uh, what I started off with, I already cut them all up, but 3 8 inch dowel. Uh, you can buy them in 36, 48, 72 inch lengths and cut them, and then depending on whether you want 9 inch or 12 inch uh, drop spindles. It'll determine how many you get from a specific stick. Um, I bought them pre-cut in a bundle, um, way more than I needed for the project because I also use them for other things. So the first thing that I did is I'll show you, <laughs> we don't have a bench sander. Bench sanders are cool. So we actually have this contraption. <laughs> We have a, vi a bench vise that's mounted to one of the workbenches, and then the belt sander is put in and locked into the vise. And it works really, really well. But you just have to keep an eye on it so that it doesn't vibrate out. <laughs> um, so I used that and I sharpened all of the ends. You can get them really, really sharp, uh, which is cool for some stuff, but not so much for drop spindles. So all of them afterwards I've sanded down uh, to be a little more blunt because if you're using it on your leg or whatever you don't want to you know drill holes um, so then I ordered these little wooden craft wheels like you might use for toy cars and I ordered a bunch of them in bulk because I was making quite a few so they all ended up about a buck a piece after after that um, the holes are listed as three-eighths of an inch, and the dowels are three-eighths of an inch, but something was off. Either the holes were a little bit smaller or the dowels were a little bit thicker, but no big deal. I just took some sandpaper and knocked these down a little bit, and what I did is I went ahead and I marked with a pencil um, on here where, where I wanted the bottom of the, the, uh, the whorl to stop. And so when I sanded, I went from that line all the way to the end to knock off a little bit of the size until the wheel, you know, the whorl. It's a whorl for drop, drop spindles. It's a wheel for cars. Um, until the whorl uh, slid down here easily. And then what was nice is because I hadn't sanded down this part at all, it kind of has a built-in stopper. Uh, so you're not going to have to worry about it sliding off while you're using it. Um, and then I used a little finer grit sandpaper uh, to clean this part up. You definitely want to sand uh, the dowels. They're usually made from poplar wood, and some of them, when you get them, are, are, are a little rough, and you don't want that to catch on your fibers while you're working. Uh, the next step, then, was to drill a little hole in for your hook, and I bought just cup hooks. They're about a buck for half a dozen, uh, so that was really inexpensive. And I wasn't exactly sure what size the thread was on them. So I just, I'll unscrew this one really quick. I went to the handy dandy drawer of drill bits, which thankfully is organized. And I just kind of lined them up and measured, you know, to see what looked really close. But then just to be sure, because I didn't want to waste my dowels, I have a piece of scrap wood that we've used with other things on the, um, what do you call it? The drill press. Um, and I drill a little hole. And then I screwed in my cup hook to make sure it was the right size. And it was. So that was perfect. But I could have adjusted and tried a different drill bit uh, just to make sure. You want it big enough for the screw threads to go in. But they do need to be snug enough that it doesn't just fall out when you shake it. So uh, I don't remember exactly what size that was. But that is literally all it takes to make one of these. Um, it's really cool. Like I said, I ordered a bunch of stuff in bulk, so my cost on these is about $1.50 a piece uh, total. If you are just making one or two and you go to like your local stores to just pick up a couple of individual pieces, you're probably going to pay double that. Um, but that's still a, a real discount over you know buying one that's, that's ready made. Um, and the nice thing about these is, like doing it in bulk, um, if somebody was teaching a class on this and wanted um, 
drop spindles for their students, it would be really inexpensive uh, for me to make a bunch for them um, and then give them to the students so they can take them home. So mine will all be bundled with the little samples of wool roving um, so that people can try it out. And then, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stash one and learn how to do it myself. But that's it. That's my quickie down and dirty tutorial on how to make a drop spindle out of things that you should be able to find in your local area or online pretty easily. Thanks.